I go making another video for all two of you who actually watch this stuff still. Um, honestly, I don't even know why I still make these, even after just saying I was done and yet here I am. It's not like I'm trying to turn a profit or make a lot of money here or any money in that sense. I just like making projects and sharing them. And I figured that YouTube would be the best platform for that because Instructables, while it's great, it's not really that, um, you don't really get that much feedback on Instructables. So I like coming to YouTube. Uh, but like I'm not seeing the return in views that I would as I did on Instructables. But if I hot glued a cat to a cactus and entitled it Life Hack, I'd be seeing them views like crazy. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. So again, why do I make these? Oh, right. It's, it's to keep myself busy and distracted from the always present dark void that is inevitable death after a short life on a rock whose time continues long after you're gone thus making your overall time here that much shorter in comparison. A short life in which we give up a lot of what little time we have to blindly follow a script that was written many, many years before us by people who follow the idea of paying bills until they die into their graves. So I'm going to do something a bit different and show the end result of the project first. No one's watching this video, so who cares? Uh, normally when I make videos I show the project at the end of the video to kind of follow the timeline of the project but no one's watching this so who cares uh, this is it if you haven't guessed from the title this is my really bright bike light that I'll be mounting to my bike and the reason for this is simply I need to see I like to ride my bike at night in my area and the streets are really dark uh, potholes are a problem on some side streets and if you hit them with road tires I have a road bike uh, the tires can actually explode rather easily. Um, I also want to start riding bike paths at night, and this will help out a lot with illuminating them and the next seven miles ahead, so I won't have any problems with that. Uh, we're going to cover exactly how I built this, but first, let me talk about the enclosure. Um, when I first made this, I had no idea I was going to end up using this tin that I had lying around. It just happened to be the perfect solution to everything. So when I got to the end of it, I was trying to figure out exactly how I was going to mount everything. Even got to the point where I was making my own boxes. And then this tin, I actually had from someone who I bought a monitor stand off of, and it, they included the hardware inside of it, and it was just sitting on my bench. And uh, one of the boards that I designed fell into it perfectly, and I'm just like, I'll just use this, this ugly Bertha right here. And uh, it turned out really well. So if we look at the tin, we can see that we have two mounts right here. These are two cell phone bike mounts that I just um, bolted onto the tin. This is a piece of wood that I added to give it some rigidity because uh, without that piece of wood, it is rather weak because it's a tin. Uh, and um, it just helps when I hit potholes or little bumps to not put a whole lot of stress on that. Another thing that alleviates the stress is the fact that these mounts still have some slop. So if I do hit a pothole, a lot of that um, impact is lost within the slop of uh, these mounts right here, which is pretty neat. On the inside of the tin, let's take off the lid, we have 84 10 millimeter bright white LEDs. Uh, these are the two boards I'll be designing. Underneath that is a battery pack, charge controller, relay, and two boost converters, and uh, some switches and wiring and stuff. On the outside, we have a charge input jack, and right here we have our two switches, which I always forget what they do, uh, so I'll power it on. Um, one switch is to turn on the entire thing, and the other switch is a dim switch. Um, when I supply just 12 volts to this thing, it is really bright. So I threw in a dim switch to be courteous to cars coming to, uh, towards me. That way I don't blind them. However, with that dim switch, it is still really bright. So I might have to uh, revisit that in the future. But the goal for this is to use it on bike paths mainly. And uh, if a car is coming, I'll probably just turn it off. But... Let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Let me just kill my overhead lights. Right there. So it's still kind of bright in my room. Um, it's still daylight outside. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on. I always forget which one is the dim switch and which one is the bright switch. So pop it on. It draws so much power that it takes a second on a cold startup to really supply all of the current needed. I think it's around one amp. It's really not a whole lot, but it's enough to really uh, give that charge controller a surprise. Um, as you can see, it is really bright. Probably just blinded you. You're welcome. But no one's watching, so who cares? Uh, so I can illuminate my face. That is creepy. And this will give you an idea of just how bright it is by itself. And then I'll throw on the dim mode. 
which isn't a whole lot dimmer than bright mode, but it is noticeably dimmer when you're writing at night. Uh, but yeah, so let's go ahead and take a look at the schematic for this, the board file, and then see how I made it. I apologize if the view for this isn't all that great. I don't want to use um, screen capture software for this because it's really not that uh, in-depth. I'll have images on Instructables below if you want to check those out. I'll also include the Gerber files on Instructables as well uh, if you want to download and make this yourself. But this is the schematic that will be consisting of my LED bike light. I wanted to make a LED panel that can be adaptable for other projects. Um, so this is what I got. It's just a an array of 42 LEDs that are that consist of groups of three in series and parallel with the rest. The voltage source is 12 volts uh, and a ground. These are mounting holes right here that I'll be using for my PCB to mount it. And uh, these resistors right here don't have a value on the schematic, uh, but I calculated 120 ohms for my setup. Might be different for yours. Uh, experiment. I know there's software online that can help calculate that, uh, but that worked out to be almost perfect for my voltage supply, how much current I wanted to draw, and all that stuff. So uh, let's go ahead and switch over to the board I created. And this board is massive. It maxed out the entire Eagle Freemium PCB size. And I, I could have shaved down some up here. You can see that. Yeah, I could have shaved down some up here and also down below. But I wanted to see what a maxed out size board was to give me a good reference in the future if I ever decided to require more board space because I, I refuse to pay for an annual subscription based PCB software thing. I don't want to. I'm not paying for it so I'll just keep using freemium until I have to find a different platform to use. So the board is actually really straightforward. I have all my resistors mounted on the right. They go to the ground pad up here. Originally I wanted all my resistors to be surface mount. I wanted to use 0805 packages. I still have the Gerber files for that. I might include them if you're interested. Uh, but I ended up going with through-hole because the company that I bought all the LEDs from didn't have that 120 ohm 805 package resistor. So I had to use through-hole just so I can get everything from one spot to avoid paying for shipping from different places. Uh, I know I could have found them on Mauser, but I would have had to buy them and then pay shipping for that. And I just figured it would be a lot cheaper just to buy all this from Tata. I bought a 175... Uh, 10 millimeter LEDs, several value resistors, and uh, it only came up to like 20 bucks. So I'm happy with it. It's not that bad. Uh, we have our mounting holes right here. I also didn't label the LEDs, as you can tell. Didn't wanna. Not really necessary. I just kind of left it blank. Um, all these series series etches are underneath on the bottom layer of the board. All the power wrenches are up top, uh, and some of the and all of the ground etches going to the resistors are on top as well. Turned out to be a really clean board. I'm actually really happy with it. One thing that bothers the hell out of me, though, is the fact that the negative lead for the LED, or the cathode, is a square pad. Normally, in my experience, LED packages have a square pad for the anode, if I'm correct. Uh, I know for a fact that they normally have the square pad for um, the positive voltage for ICs, or might just be the Mark Pen 1, I'm not too sure. But I remember having LED packages that had the anode as the square. Uh, could be wrong, I know that the flat side of the LED package also uh, points out which side is negative, but I could have sworn that this meant positive. Uh, it's not that big of a deal, I'm just being nitpicky, but let's go ahead and get our boards ordered and uh, start making this thing. Also, Ah, that's it. Let's go ahead and make our boards. The boards came in really fast. I got them in four days, including the weekend. The quality, as usual, is impressive. The worst part is soldering all these LEDs. I found that clipping the leads after clinching them, then soldering them, to be the fastest method, which was still pretty slow.
So now that I have both boards soldered up, let's go ahead and design a power supply for this. This is the schematic for my power supply that I'll be hacking together. It consists of a USB battery pack. Uh, so this is a 6.6 .6 amp hour battery pack at 1 amp. Um, just a normal off the shelf USB one. Two of these voltage boosters, one's going to be set to 12 volts, one will be set to 9 volts, and this relay right here. Um, so what I want to do is have a dimming feature for this light. Uh, so the cheapest and easiest way to go ahead and dim the LEDs um, is just to use different voltage inputs. So one's going to be 12 for the full supply, and then one's going to be 9 for a lesser supply, which will result in um, dimmer LEDs. You can easily dim it using PWM, but I don't want to. I'm just going to dim it this cheap and easy way just to get the project done and use what I have on hand so that way I don't have to order anything. Um, so the reason why I'm using a relay is because I don't have any single pole double throw switches. I only have single pole single throw. Uh, this relay is a single pole double throw, so that'll solve that solute, that'll solve that problem right there. So how this works is this is our battery pack that's supplying the 5 volts. We have an on-off switch in between that going to the 12 volt booster and the 9 volt booster that are both in parallel. Uh, there's not a whole lot of power being drawn from one that doesn't have an active load, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, both of the outputs are going to the normally closed and normally open pin of the relay, and the common pin of the relay is what's going to our LED array. So how the relay works is actually pretty simple. The normally closed pin is going to the 12 volts input for the LEDs, so that way when the relay is off, the 12 volts just goes there by itself. Um, when we energize the relay, um, thus supplying current to the coil and giving it a ground, uh, the normally open will then close and then the 9 volt output will be supplied to the LEDs thus giving us a dim feature. Pretty easy way of using a relay as a switch. Um, if I get single pull double throw switches in the future I might go ahead and upgrade it but honestly if I get about two hours runtime out of this light I'll be fine with it. Uh, so I'm just going to use this until I, I get an idea of how long the whole setup lasts. So let's go ahead and put this thing together. First I'll set one of the voltage boosters to 12 volts and the other one to 9 volts. After that I'll cover the potentiometer in epoxy to make sure it doesn't move. To prep the tin, I will channel my inner Peter Brown and mix some epoxy and use it to mount two wood posts to inside of the tin. These posts will allow me to separate the electronics from the metal while giving me something to screw into. Using the holes in my boards, I will mount both of them to a piece of wood that's just big enough to fit inside the tin and on top of the posts. In order to add both of the switches, I had to thin down one of the posts to allow for the room. Next, I'll have to mount the GC jack. The red spots on the wood indicate a keep out zone. This helps to prevent any of the electronics from interfering with the switches, jack, and posts. I will use more epoxy to mount all the electronics to the wood's underside and wire everything up, referencing my diagram I made earlier. To finish it up, I will use wood screws to mount the top board into the bottom posts. Also, I'll have to take this whole thing apart to add the cell phone holder bike mounts.
welcome to my first ASMR video. I will be breathing heavily into the mic as I pedal through some wind. Uh, right now I'm riding my bike. I got the mount or the light mounted right on my handlebars. And uh, streets are pretty dark. They're not as dark as they usually are when I go out. Got some nice street lighting and it's not as cloudy as it normally is. So when we cross this section right here, we're gonna throw on the brights and see how bright it is. And it's just illuminating everything. Just ignore the giant supermarket up front and the dim mode is noticeably dimmer. So I have to make a turn here. So this light is insanely bright. I will get a lot of use out of it. So go ahead and subscribe if you want to not watch my videos in the future. And I will not see you next time.